Hey, what's going on guys? Go Monkey Games here. In this video, we're going to be writing two methods for getting terminal states of the tic-tac-toe game. So there might be either a drawn state or one state. And without further ado, let's actually open the terminal in the current working directory, run the code from the previous part and start writing some new code. So I just want to say Python 3 and tic-tac-toe.py. Okay. And just to make it easier, uh, regarding the debugging pr uh, process, uh, I would like to define a custom board state and also I want to print that at the very end. So print the board and print, print board. So uh, by default we have an empty board and here I want to define custom board state. So I can simply say like board.position and uh, assume that the position is a type of dictionary where the key is the pair of coordinates like uh, row and column uh, and the value is, actu is the actual value of a given square. So I can simply say like 0, 0 and this would be, well, let's start with the empty squares at the moment and then I would be altering them respectively. So we have three rows and uh, three columns and three rows. And now the first coordinate would be the row. So 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and 0, 1, 2 here. And here respectively, it would be 0, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, one like this. So let's just try to put a cross to some sort of a square. We got this exactly in the location that we supposed to have that. Okay, so now I just want to have some random, uh, some random position. Well, let's have something like this. And this would be a drawn position, obviously. So Here is the drawn position. And uh, the reason why I call this position drawn because there are no more empty squares on the board available, while at the same time, uh, there are no, it's not a winning state because we don't have either three crosses in the row or three knots in the row as well. But uh, just for simplicity and for clarity, uh, the only condition that w would be involved within our is draw function uh, is draw method would it be to say whether there are, uh, if any if any empty square is actually left on board and you might wonder that uh, in that case uh, we can claim a winning position to be the drawn position well in order to s resolve that issue we'll first be checking for the winning positions within our main game loop and then we would be checking for the drawn position so that's the the most simple way of how to resolve this uh, resolve this issue basically so just right below the make move function uh, uh, we want to get whether the game is drawn okay like this so def is draw uh, oh sorry is draw it only takes the self instance and here I need to loop over board squares and I can simply say for row and column in our board uh, sorry self dot position uh, and now let's say if uh, uh, if find if no like not like this let's say empty square is available like this so we can say if and self dot position indexed by row and column and again like row and column you might want you might wonder that these are the two values it's actually it's kind of tuple here but uh, it's treated to be the key of the position dictionary so that's how we can ask uh, for every single square in, uh, on a tic-tac-toe board whether there is something or not. So if it, if it, it, it is equal to uh, this empty square, or better to say self dot 
empty square like this, in this case, uh, we can say that uh, this is not a draw and we just return false and by default uh, by default uh, we return true uh, return the draw basically like this so return true so now we can already use uh, uh, our is draw method to actually ask the question whether this current position is actually drawn or not. So uh, let's say print and let's say like draw status and we just simply say board dot is draw. Okay, just forgot a colon here. Okay, so it says like the drawn static status is true, and that's because we don't have any empty square. Now, if you just try to uh, replace a random element by the empty square, it already returns false because we just hit this uh, empty square in this condition, and that means that it's not yet a draw, that means that the game is still going on. Okay, so, but now you might wonder, like, if we just uh, say, take this like position, okay, and we say like, uh, the draw status is true, while actually this position is not drawn, so this is the winning position. So first, again, like I, as I was mentioning before, we would be looking for the winning state, so whether the position is actually won or not. So now, uh, I'll replace this with a win status and the method would be board is win respectively and here I want to get whether the game is won and by the way the one and uh, the uh, winning and drawing are, are known as the terminal uh, positions of of the game and that would be uh, on the cards when it comes to implementing the Monte Carlo tree search algorithm itself. Well, anyway, def is win, and it also takes only the self instance, and that's kind of it. And here, uh, I want to define uh, some possible uh, some possible winning scenarios, kind of like like that. So there might be sequences like horizontal sequence, vertical sequence, and two diagonal sequences. So let's say, let's start with a vertical sequence detected, uh, detection, not detected, but detection. Okay, like this. Also, we need to have a horizontal horizontal sequence detection like this also we need the diagonal one and there would be two the first and the second diagonal so we just have a look at the board we have this diagonal so this would be the first diagonal and this here here and here this would be the second diagonal so I just want to say first diagonal sequence detection and and second diagonal sequence detection and by default uh, By default, uh, uh, we return false. Well, <laughs> just thinking how to say this. But by, by default, we return mm, non-winning uh, state. 
So return and false. So now it should be false because it's just gonna default stuff here. But uh, as far as we uh, detect this vertical sequence, uh, it, it would give us uh, winning status equals to true. So let's start with implementing the vertical, uh, the vertical sequence detection. So in order to do this, uh, we need to loop over every column. So uh, this column, this column, and this column respectively. So uh, first we need to loop over the board columns and then over the rows. So here, the very first thing we need to loop over board columns. So for call in range of three. And also I want to define winning sequence uh, list and call it winning sequence. And this would be the list. And we would be appending elements to this winning sequence. I'll actually, it doesn't really matter which particular element we would be appending there because the matter of distinguishing whether the winning sequence is actually winning already, it would be the matter of uh, getting the length of this array. That's just for the future implementation. And now we need to loop over board rows, respectively. So for row in range three. And now it's just enough to, say, to ask if uh, self dot position and row and column is the index for uh, is the dictionary key. So if it is equal self dot player two, and now you might wonder why we compare it with the player two. Well, uh, it doesn't mean that it would it would only be compared with either crosses or nots. It would be compared with either those or those, depending on uh, which value the player two actually gets. So that's quite quite an important thing to consider. And in this case, in this case, we want to update winning sequence by uh, but again like it's enough to say simply like winning sequence dot append and it's it doesn't really matter what what do we append there we we, we could have append just a string or whatever so for simplicity uh, i would have append in the row and column but, but again like this doesn't matter what we append here it, it just would be the matter of the length of this winning sequence array so now so if we have if we have three uh, elements in the row well by saying in the row uh, I don't mean only in the row it might be in the column as well but uh, three in the row I mean like three one one by one actually so if I have three elements in the row so we say if the length of the length of our winning sequence is equal to three uh, this means uh, the game is won so we want to return the game is won state and simply return true here okay so uh, but it still gives us f us false because at the moment, if I have a look at the player two, it should be zero because uh, when we're making moves using this make move function that we've implemented uh, previously, it swaps the players. But uh, I've just defined this board position manually without swapping the players. So just want to give you an idea. If we have a look at, we just want to bring the board uh, player two. And this should be equal to zero. You see, like it's equal to zero here. But if we just uh, if we just set player to well, let's let's say 
swap swap players manually so i can simply say that player uh, i mean board dot player two is equal to cross in this case and board player one is equal to not okay then now it prints that we have this x as the player to and already the winning status uh, asserts being true as well so we did successfully detect this this sequence and just to give you an idea this would be the same for whatever position so say like status true here as well just let me get rid of this uh well i can play uh, i can say print uh player two and board player two okay so player two is x uh, let's make it okay so again true for this one and should be exactly the same for this one but here we already have so just to avoid this um, oh it's not it's not really that great idea so let's make it x yeah so also winning sequence oh uh, actually yeah, here let's make it a zero because it doesn't matter at the moment, but they just don't really want to have some duplications. Well, actually, yeah, it's not it's not that simple. Well, okay, guys, I, I hope you got the idea that no matter where we have this uh, vertical winning win, winning sequence, it, it kind of works. But uh, now, uh, in order to detect this winning state for say for the zeros, for for the nots like here, so say not not not. Uh, and it will it, it will tell us that it's kind of not one it's false uh, let's make it cross here as well and the reason why this is so because the player 2 is currently equal to x to the cross so if we just swap them back in this case the win state has been detected as well so how this is clear again like uh, when it comes to the game loop this player swapping would have been done automatically. So you remember like from the previous part, it's done within the make move. So here the players are getting swapped every time the move, the move is made. So uh, the, winning the win detection would be working for both sides. I hope that's clear. Okay, and now let's go and implement, well, let's actually get back to the crosses here. So I want this dislike stuff. And now let's try to find the horizontal sequence instead of, of the vertical sequence. So it says like it's false. Well, uh, actually also to, uh, yeah, I don't even know how to make it. <laughs> uh, I just don't, don't really want this diagonal stuff being available. So probably we just make it null. And probably cross here okay to make it look like a bit okay it's still still not what we want to have okay so the, uh, we don't care about the legality of this position at the moment so what I want to say that actually we need to have three uh, in the row horizontally three elements in the row horizontally so now to, d to detect this one we just need to swap the row and columns in the loop we've already made so still false so if i just grab this code and paste it here and i just need to swap the row and the column by places and by the way i also forgot to provide the commentary so let's say if uh Let's say if found same element 
in the row. If found same next element in the row, then we want to update the winning sequence. So this is it. Okay. Maybe not the best ever commentaries, but still. Okay. So if we run this again, we now have the win status equals to true because we already have this. Uh, we already have this uh, horizontal stuff being available. And now uh, let's let's break it. And now we have the diagonal stuff, and don't we can't we still can't see can't see our win here. So here we need to alter the uh, to alter this sort of a loop slightly a bit. And in order to do this, we need to grab only this part of the code. Okay. And. The first diagonal would be the following. So we simply need to initialize the column and column would be equal to row. That's very simple. And now it should be capable of detecting this diagonal here. Okay. And the very last but not least stuff is to be able to detect the opposite direction diagonal. So now it's false. And it's almost the same code. Uh, we just need to alter the formula to for getting our cult. So this would be three minus row minus one. And we got this detection as well. So very simple, this is kind of it basically uh, regarding the win and loss state detection. So just like I've been mentioning at the very beginning, so if we just ask for uh, how, how would it be distinguishing between the win and draw status. So we say, uh, let's say distinguish between uh, won and drawn states. So we can simply say if a uh, board is win, then we just print this win status status and else we just print the draw status. And again, like assuming that currently we have the winning position, we just see that the status is actually a win. Okay, and if we just uh, alter this position so it won't be uh, a winning position anymore like this, see, then we have that this is the draw. Let's say. Okay, just. Maybe like this. So this game is drawn. And actually. Let's say game status is game is one and here game is drawn. That's it. Okay guys, so this is it from my side and uh, we are almost done regarding uh, the tic-tac-toe part of this reinforcement learning tutorial and the only thing left here uh, to to do within this tic-tac-toe uh, part uh, of this tutorial series is actually to create a function for generating moves that we would be making use of uh, within the Monte Carlo tree search itself. And also we'll need uh, to make a simple game loop that would be uh, that would be allowing us to 
play versus computer basically well first we'll make a game loop that would be uh, allowing us to play like in a human versus human mode just to make sure that uh, the game flow working correctly that the terminal states of the games are getting detected perfectly well and when we realize that it's kind of done then we'll go and implement the Monte Carlo to research and then we just embed the computer thinking into our game loop and that's kind of it so this is it from my side hope you enjoyed this tutorial hope to see you in the next series uh within this tic-tac-toe using reinforcement learning until the next video and take care